Hi, this is the Gem Geek, and today we're going to be taking a closer look at the differences in identifying natural earth-made opal from synthetic lab-grown ones. First, I'd like to give you a little background on opals. It'll be important to know how these stones form so that we can call attention to how they are copied in the laboratory. Opal is a type of silica, which is the same mineral as quartz and one of the most common minerals found on the planet. When silica is deposited slowly over time and under the right conditions, it forms tiny microscopic spheres. The spheres arrange themselves in a very organized structure and harden to create opal. When light enters the stone, the spheres act like a prism to break up the light into spectral colors. When this happens, the opal is described by showing play of color or fire. Opal can have multiple colors, or only one in some cases. The color is dependent on the size and consistency of the silica spheres. Gem quality opal will most always feature some kind of play of color. The good news is that things that look like opals, imitations or simulants, and opals that are made in the lab, synthetic, have distinct features which allow for easy identification. I'm going to take you through synthetic stones, and then we're going to look at a couple of imitations that are worthy to look out for. Um, and at last, we will finish with natural opals. While studying to be a gemologist at the GIA, one of my instructors explained to me that magnification of natural opal play of color will look like fine brush strokes inside of the microscope, as if the color was painted inside of the crystal. However, in a lab-grown opal, it's the structure of how silica spheres arrange themselves that will lead you to a proper identification. I've always loved that visual cue, and it has served me well since I've used it. Look at this piece of synthetic Gilson opal. Notice how on one side, there's like a columnar structure, multiple columns all running in the same direction. As I rotate the stone roughly 90 degrees, you can see where those columns terminate. The area where the columns end is showing what's called in the trade as a snakeskin pattern. This is a trade term to describe the particular pattern seen in synthetic opals. The play of color shows a pattern that is just a little too bright and just um, a little too regular to be considered a natural stone. Now, that doesn't mean that all opals that show snakeskin and columnar structure are synthetic, but it should make you suspicious enough to investigate further when you see it on your own. This is a slocum stone. The inventor of the slocum stone wanted to develop a stone that would look like opal, but wear better over time. The result is available in rough or polished stones with any body color you can imagine and any type of play of color. When viewing the stone on its side, you'll see that the color is only towards the base of the stone. Air bubbles and strain are also commonly found in the dome of these stones. Now let's take a look at these natural opals inside of the microscope using reflected overhead lighting from a diffused light source. I'm going to show you several stones to give you an idea of the range available in natural play of color. Unfortunately, there isn't any one detail to look for to confirm natural opal from synthetic opal. Play of color can really look like anything and everything inside of natural opal. The best way to verify if an opal has natural origins is to systematically verify that it couldn't be any of the simulants or synthetics that are also available. Here's a nice little opal from Australia. There's a clean stripe of opal play of color running down the center of the stone. You'll also notice that the stone has some areas that don't show any fire, and that's common. As I rotate it in and out of the light, try to focus on the tiny brush strokes. Notice how uneven the colors have arranged themselves throughout the stone. There is nothing inside of this stone that would lead me to believe that it could be a lab-created one. This is an Ethiopian Welo opal. This is a natural play of color inside of natural opal. Notice how the play of color seems to dance throughout the gem material. It isn't stuck inside of any one random place. It kind of really follows all of the gem material all over the place. And notice how randomly the colors seem to dance. This is an opal doublet, and a pretty nice one at that. Take a look at all the pretty colors. 
When we turn this one on its side, you'll notice the fine opal layer on top, then the layer of glue, or whatever epoxy was used to join the stones together, then the bottom layer stone. The bottom layer could be anything, but most commonly it'll be common opal or some other non-gem material that the gem cutter had at time of cutting. That's it! I hope you have enjoyed this video. Good luck out there!